All right, so I managed to finish the sequence. If you were watching on stream, we were trying to figure it out and it was utilizing on your mark and wanted seeker of sinful spoils because you need a card to send off of these effects and on your mark fulfills both of them, right? So you don't need to have any extra cards. This is cool. So you search the witch, right? And you activate on your mark. It'll search you your jet. Typically, you summon jet off of her effect. But in this case, we're going to be utilizing a bit more than just her. We're going to be utilizing the snake eye monsters as well. The little guys, the level ones. And you search the synchron to discard for her effect. And then this on your mark stays on field so we can send it for the spell. Okay, so discard. Special. Okay. So you place original sinful spoils snake eye, right? And then snake eye will then send it on your mark. And this is where you get the blue guy, snake eye ash. If this card is normal or special summon, you can add one level fire monster from your deck to your hand. You can send two face up cards you control to the graveyard, including this card, special summon one snake eye monster from your hand or deck except snake eye ash. You can only use each effect of snake eye ash once per turn. So the, all the little ones have the same effect where they send itself and another card to summon a snake eye from your deck. That is going to come up later, okay? But now you're going to search the purple one. So the purple one says, if you control a fire monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon snake eye. That's verge. <laughs> it sounds so bad. <laughs> Once per turn this way, during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can send two face up cards you control to the graveyard, including this card, special summon one snake eye monster from your hand or deck, except snake eye birch. I think this these will be so cool if they can summon from graveyard as well, because you're going to be utilizing their boss monster and it ends up in a grave and it'd be insane if you can summon from the graveyard as well, because you just reborn that guy. You'll see what I'm talking about. But you need this to fulfill the cost, right? So special and then you're going to use Ash's effect. Sending to summon the green one. This is the one that lets you summon back a fire from your graveyard or banish, which is pretty cool. All right. So what happens here is you're going to activate and then reborn your jet sync run. Okay. This is pretty cool. And then this is where jet's other effect gets overlooked because majority of the time everyone knows this as discard summon itself. But if this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you can add one junk monster from your deck to your hand. Like... <laughs> Not like who's gonna search a junk card? We are. <laughs> Not I'm sure anyone else, right? So you have to ch you have to order this in a way where you make sure you dodge the ash, right? Because assuming they didn't ask you earlier. Um, I mean, I don't know if they did or not, but if they didn't, I mean, maybe they're waiting because they're not sure what you're doing. And fair enough, because it's hard to really pinpoint the choke point for this deck. <laughs> okay, so you add, you revive the jet, and you search a junk synchron. Because remember, you have not normal summoned yet. Right, so you have uh, three other cards that can help you progress your combo. So whether it be hand traps, or whether it be more extenders, so that's the cool thing about this. You can even just go for a Baron here, right? And then try to play off of that. So then now, you, this is where you use the other effect. You remember how I mentioned that all of these have a second effect where they send itself and another card for field and especially when a snake out from deck or, or hand, right? So this is where you use uh, the green guy's effect and you summon the big guy. This guy is pretty cool. So you can target one face-up monster on the field or in either graveyard. Place it face-up in its owner's spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell. So that's that that's cool in a way because if you bait in an interaction, right? Let's say you let's say you have a, let, let, let's say you have like a like a like a boss monster that, that got destroyed or something earlier in the turn. You can place it in the spell and trap card zone, and then during their turn, rev, uh, uh, summon it to your main monster zone. So it works both ways, where it can be one of your monsters, or it can be one of their monsters. Well, let's say they have a Baron. If they have a Baron and you baited it, you summon this guy, you place their Baron in their, in their spell and trap card zone, and then on their turn, you place it on your main monster zone, which is pretty cool. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can target one monster, card treat as a continuous spell, on the field. So that would have been the Baron that you targeted on their turn, or maybe it's your Baron. Special summon it to your field. That It's, it's like... Uh, it's like a reborn with extra steps, right? It's that's basically what it is. If this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you can special summon two level one fire monsters from your graveyard. You can only use each effect of snake eyes once per turn. 
So the floating effect is where it all, it, it, everything just starts falling into place. You'll see. So you use that, and then it has another effect. So right now, to get some value, because you you have no clue what what they're playing, or you don't, you, you go and interrupt it. So what she does, during your opponent's turn, if this card is sent from its owner's hand or field to the graveyard, you can send one card from your hand or field to to the graveyard. And if you do, special summon card. So if any way, what you see, you place it and you place the witch in the, your spell and trap card zone. So if like if this gets if this leaves the field anyway. It will trigger. You discard a card, or you send a card from the field, and summon her, and then you can get access to the spell again, right? Because you're going to be able to banish this for this to draw a card. So then you can have another. It's just more recursion, right? For more, more, more resources. But it'll just she'll just be there for now, okay? And then this is where you join, summon your junk synchron. Your junk synchron then summons your jet synchron, and this is where a level nine kept coming up and. You can pick and choose whatever night you prefer, but I wanted to get a draw off of this, so I ended up going with Croc. Because it, at the end of the day, like if you play TG and you just make this and you just keep drawing, 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 this is gonna get huge. It's gonna get really big, and it's an, it's a, it, its level is important because you're gonna use it to climb and get access to your Crimson Dragon targets. Okay, so then you go ahead, you draw a card, and you trigger this guy's effect. Right, so. Because he's sent to the graveyard, you can summon level one, two level one fire monster from your graveyard, right? You could have summoned Jet if you wanted to, but this is just basically because you need non-tuners to make speeder, okay? So you draw a card, and then now you go speeder, right? And this is where, like, it's a bit different because once we get to this point, you can basically take it any route you want, right? But I was really wanting to make SMSD, so this is the route I chose, okay? But be mindful that you can pick any extra deck monster you want. Okay. Active effect, search illumination. Go into Punisher. So the reason why you go into Punisher is because it's convenient, right? It's kind of... Re remember when we used to just effortlessly just go Chaos Ruler and Jet into a Hot Red Dragon Archer in Abyss. Like, that was so convenient. It was effortless, right? It, was, it, just, it just fit right in place. This is... The exact same, okay? Active Illumination, summon your trap from deck. Because you need to be make sure that you have your Star Stone Field right now at this moment. Okay. Then you summon your Crystal Wing. I mean, you could have done Crystal Wing before then, you know, but nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then now, you're going to use Excel Sync of Dragon's effect to ensure that you get both sorts in the graveyard so when you have your SMSD on the field you get three attacks three attacks okay and this is where you trigger your assault to revive your SD Excel Sync of Shortest Dragon because that's pretty important to allow you to finish your, your your complete board okay so in the back and then you activate Crimson Dragon and you bring out SMSD bro but there's an issue, right? Because typically what we want is to have a salt synchron in the graveyard, right? We want this in the graveyard to give him double Omni Negate, right? That's what we want. But we used it to revive this guy. But we play another Dragon Synchro. Okay, so we use Revolution Synchron. We mill a card, summon it back. We go into Excel Synchron, right? And Trail will trigger, giving us a Dragon Non-Tuner material, right? And what does the spatter require? A Dragon Non-Tuner, okay? So then you activate Excel Synchron, sending Stardust Synchron from your deck, increasing its level by 4, making it a level 9. So you make the spatter. And this is how you get your Assault back, okay? The spatter revives your Assault. And then you make your Baron. Right, and this is without having to use your your uh, your starter synchro and your starter trail, so you can go even further, which is the cool thing about this. But this is just off two cards that are pretty insane. Like it's pretty wild. <laughs> that this is pretty crazy. Like the fact that you have this board just off two cards, is, it's insane. You don't draw. We didn't utilize hyperlight burn as we typically would, but. This is pretty insane, bro. This is pretty insane because you draw one of Croc. This will banish itself to put this on, on at the bottom of your deck. So then you can search it with Witch, and then do it the following turn, right? That's pretty cool. Imagine if we played um, some of the Crimson Dragon spells and traps. 
like maybe we play Synchro Rumble, Synchro World, The Trap. It's pretty hectic, bro. Can you... <laughs> this is crazy. This is pretty insane. This is just like that. It's insane. So this is just like a rough draft. Right? Just, I was just experimenting with these guys. Because at first I was like, wait, these are pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it, it's still at the beginning. So we're, we're going to be experimenting with this for sure. But whether we max this out, whether we max this out. Because the argument would be, oh, you would just want to max this out and then keep this at one because you can add it from graveyard anyways but you just want to open this well, you know what I mean? so like it's, it's, it's something like, like the fact that this could possibly get ashed and then you just open it anyways like it, it, all these things you can consider uh whether you start making room for non-engine then of course then you can cut back on this guy you know and then you know but like for the most part i was just trying to out see see what it is because it's like you want to open this like, if you can open this, that gets everything going, it sets everything up, it's, it's, it's really nice. But, what do you think of the combo? The combo is pretty cool, huh? There's still three more slots that you can put in. Uh, I'm not too sure, but I think these are pretty nice. Everything flows, so... Yeah, what else, what else would you want to put in? Calamity? You could put the Calamity lock if you wanted to. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's wild, bro.